Let's take a look at some charts on Bitcoin from last week's article on Brave New Coin. So there are probably 500 things that I could talk about regarding Bitcoin right now, <laughs> but I'm going to focus mainly on having mining and extremely high time frame sort of fundamental charts that a lot of people are interested in and familiar with. So having is coming up and the block reward will decrease by half, hence the term having. This is a calculation from Brave New Coin here with four different scenarios. Now these scenarios will get sloshed around based on hash rate and most everything is going to get adjusted based on hash rate. Bitcoin's proof of work, which means it needs people mining it. And if those people are not profitable based on their electricity costs, their overhead costs, and the block reward, as well as the Bitcoin price, they will most likely turn off their miner. They will, they will also most likely sell on exchanges. Certainly this isn't everyone. This isn't the holders of last resort, but this is the miners who are agnostic to the chain, agnostic to the idea of crypto, that sort of thing. They're going to sell because they have to, to pay the bills. That's just the way it is. So you're going to see continued pressure on mining, probably going into having, so long as price is below, you know, 8,000, 10,000. This doesn't mean that a majority of miners aren't currently still in profit, because I think many of them are based on the calculations from uh, F2 Pool, which has a great app that breaks everything down. Most of the miners, the newer miners, their break-even price is 5K, 4K, 3K. You know, it's, it's low. I think in general, most of the miners on the network are older miners, stuff like S9s or some of the older Bitmain miners, ASICs. And they're going to have a hard time keeping those on based on mining profitability. So hash rate is going to get extremely loose it, we're, I'm seeing estimates of down 15% over the past week. Uh, difficulty is going to adjust to the downside most likely in the next 8 to 10 days. And this is all going to sort of adjust having countdown. In general, it probably won't happen past June. It's going to happen sometime in May most likely. You can see the four scenarios here and you can check all these out. Uh, but this is important because post having to me, that's when stuff starts to get real for the miners because that's when their reward, that's when their profitability is decreased very dramatically. So if price doesn't rise to hold up the reward in the USD value, uh, they're probably going to take another hit post having hash rate wise. So we'll probably see an additional increase in block times, for example, which are currently around 12 minutes plus certainly this is since july 2010 you can see the hash rate will go all over the place historically it's actually been less than 10 minutes mainly because hash rate has continued to rise uh, there's the 10 minute line right there on the horizontal so you can see historically hash rate is basically below 10 minutes most of the time because hash rate has continued to rise now as hash rate falls before a difficulty adjustment which is currently what's happening Ha uh, block times will increase way above 10 minutes. So as block times increase, you get you start to see congestion. So this is unconfirmed transactions. Um, it hit just above 60,000, which it hasn't really happened. So this is since March 10th. You can see we had this spike on the 12th and the 13th, which is very closely related to price. You know, as people are sort of panic selling, moving to exchanges, moving out of exchanges, uh, moving to OTC. People start to pay higher and higher fee because they want priority in their sends to exchanges. So you can see it's definitely at a six month high. That's, that's October. If we go back to a year, you can see it's definitely lower than it was in uh, June last year, which was another sort of all time high zone or not all time high, but local high zone. Now you see peaks in congestion typically around peaks in price. Again, just because people are either sending to an exchange to sell, sending an exchange uh, from an exchange after buying, or you know they're selling at the as price goes up, that sort of thing. This is a combination currently as as hash rate is coming down. Again, we're seeing congestion 
Uh, we're seeing slight delays in the network. Fees are slightly up. You can see that, that the colors here represent the fees. So these are transactions sent with very little fee, and these are transactions sent at a higher fee. Some of this is automatic based on the wallet. So if it, it sees a lot of congestion, the fees are going to keep pushing higher and higher and higher. And that sort of artificially inflates the priority in the fees because you know, if wallets are just kind of estimating what's going on and increasing everything, it's just going to continue to push the fee market higher and higher and higher so long as there's demand in the transactions. So then you're going to see this, this, this uh, buildup of unconfirmed transactions like this with fees getting higher. So there's definitely demand in the fee market, which is good. And you can see uh, the mempool, which is just another way of looking at it, got really high and fees pending uh, on these total transactions gotten very high. Let me just see in the total, let's see, we'll go six months back. Yeah, it's definitely the higher end of the six month look back. And if we go even further, you know, we don't see this until basically the previous local high in price, June, July last year. So going forward, it's going to be interesting to see, again, if hash rate keeps coming off, are we going to get congestion? Are we going to get panic selling? Um, are we going to get waves of selling on exchanges? Because when you, when you see congestion like this, what tends to happen is um, coins on exchanges already panic sell or they sell, they short, whatever. And then as people see that, they're like, oh, I got to sell because, right, because, you know, people don't, <laughs> people aren't rational. People don't think about, buying low and selling high, they typically do the opposite, where they buy high and sell low. So as price is going down, people are like, oh no, I need to sell, I'm going to lose all my money, or I'm way down, I need to, I, you know, hit my limit on what my pain, my max pain. So you get these waves of selling as there's congestion on the network, and as people are kind of trying to panic sell. So that's certainly not ideal for normal market conditions. Um, another key metric I like to look at right now is Google Trends. So this goes back since 2016. You can see most of 2018, most of 2019, very low. Again, Google Trends tends to mirror price extremely well. This is across all assets for crypto. So you'll see June, late June, early July, basically when was the multi-year high in uh, Google Trends, certainly a local high in price. We're seeing local lows in price being put in right now. Multi-year lows, well, maybe not multi-year, but certainly yearly lows putting it being put in for price and Bitcoin's popping up. Very similar to local highs in price. You're seeing people Google, you know, why is Bitcoin falling? What is Bitcoin? Why is it correlated to the Dow, S&P, that sort of thing? <laughs> Where can I buy? Where can I sell Bitcoin? That sort of thing. There are lots of headlines about uh, Bitcoin's dead, Bitcoin is dying, uh, Bitcoin never had a chance, you know, stuff like that. So you're seeing a lot of search interest in uh, Google Trends around this time, which to me is what I want to see. I don't want to see us dying in the dark, you know, I want to see for any coin if, if that you're in, you know, you want to see a very visible mainstream media reaction, people reacting. Uh, it gets in the lexicon, people know that it exists, that sort of thing. I certainly don't want to make it sound like everything is bullish no matter what happens. But again, you don't want to die in the dark. You want to have headlines because that brings new people in. Uh, just a few like, I'm not going to explain all these metrics. Check out lookintobitcoin.com. Great website for all this stuff. But um, these are all fundamental metrics related to on-chain stuff or issuance. And essentially what I'm seeing across all of these this is MVRV, we're at the lower end of the historic range. You can see we tend to poke below. So up here is price. This is uh, MVRV historically um, on this other axis. So you can see this is basically the, the buy range and we've poked below it a few times. So we're getting there <laughs> as far as like historically, you know, we're, we broke the 200 week moving average, which is a massive level, but it, it might actually be on this chart, this line here. No, that's not the 200 week. Um, but anyway, these metrics are certainly pointing us to, uh, we're getting close as far as the bottom is concerned. This is Puel multiple related to daily coin issuance. This is going to get adjusted with halving as well. Uh, certainly getting there, uh, lower bound, upper bound, etc. as far as the range is concerned. 
uh, stock to flow, extremely popular narrative. Again, very related to having issuance, logarithmic growth, that sort of thing. Basically calculates the days until the next halving um, and suggests that, you know, this keep going up to whatever price you want to name based on having. But uh, historically, it's followed this very closely related to having. So again, with having coming up, another fundamental metric or long-term technical metric you can look at. Certainly, it's below that level currently. Uh, this is probably the most technical of all the metrics, uh, the Bitcoin logarithmic growth curve way down below this level. You hear me talk about pitchfork levels very frequently, and people who don't like the pitchfork tend to like the log logarithmic growth curve. Uh, we've certainly busted below that pretty far down at this point. You can see it's way down his the historic low, kind of similar to the 200-week moving average in my mind. These are all, you know, they're all just looking at the right side, of the left side of the chart to try to predict the right side of the chart. Past results don't guarantee future results, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But once you see this trend fit, you know, over 10 years, that's why this stuff exists. That's why stock to flow and logarithmic growth curves and pitchforks all tends to make sense for the most part. You know, until we start breaking down from everything, everywhere, you know, global markets blaze, like I mentioned in the article, everything is selling. Every, the everything bubble is popping and everything is selling. So as far as what happened on the markets, you know, it wasn't a single exchange leading it wasn't uh, an attempt to flash crash the market and have everybody follow. If we look at just Bitstamp, Coinbase, Gemini, it bit Kraken compared to the BLX, which is uh, BNC's index. If we look at the volume, so the bubbles represent uh, volume, the color is the exchange, the size is the, the amount of volume. There wasn't really, you know, somebody, one exchange just dumping. It was multi-exchange levels being broken you know you can see kraken certainly had a lot of volume at these local lows um bitstamp was sort of above the blue here was sort of above everybody else and then sort of came back in line um but in general you know bitstamp saw its highest volume in a while kraken certainly did coinbase the eth volume on coinbase has hit an all-time high uh, on those lows and we're still seeing you know this is uh a few days ago at this point, prices weighed below even 5,500. Um, but when I see a drop like we did, I always like to look at the exchange volumes and see, was there one player who really tipped the wagon in favor of uh, this? Or, you know, was it just a consensus among everybody? And that's certainly what it looked like, what happened to start all this, this drop. So... As Bitcoiners, we like to think that uh, we're an uncorrelated asset, yada, yada, yada. But, you know, currently, if we look at the correlations between, this is SPX, 30-day rolling correlation between Bitcoin and uh, the SPX or, you know, any U.S. traditional markets, pick any any of them, NASDAQ, Dow, etc. Pick any global indice, you know, Nikkei, HSI, um, China, you know, pick anything. It's all going to be, it's all going to look the same right now because everything's just selling off. So you can see correlation is approaching one, and it has been since sort of the beginning of the year. On the way up, it was certainly correlated. Uh, the correlation fell, and now it's way up again. So that's certainly something to watch over the next few weeks is can we break this, this correlation between global indices melting down and uh, Bitcoin melting down? Uh, another thing I look at is the VIX, which is a volatility index, the fear index, as they say. Historically, pops in the VIX have been really good indicators for a buy signal in price. So that was certainly the case here. Uh, local low as the VIX spiked way up. Uh, currently, we're approaching levels only seen in the VIX since 2008. So Bitcoin wasn't exactly around in 2008. That's sort of when it started. So this is the first true test for Bitcoin in a recession, in recessionary bear market legacy conditions. Can it hold up? Can it actually be, uh, this is Ethereum, uh, but it doesn't really matter. The Bitcoin chart's the same. Um, everything looks the same. Um, can can Bitcoin, Ethereum, all these, any crypto asset, can it hold up against uh, traditional market dumping? So far, that hasn't been the case. As the US and the world continues to print more and more money in the multi-trillions, we'll find out, right? This is a giant experiment. Hopefully, it isn't a failed experiment as far as Bitcoin is concerned, and hopefully 
this stuff will uh, turn around at some point. But right now, you know, it doesn't look the greatest. Uh, VIX definitely needs to come down. I think as the VIX comes down, we'll see the correlation hopefully come off a little bit. Uh, but, you know, seeing VIX 80 plus in, in the 90s even is possible in the next few weeks. Um, I don't think it's going to be good for crypto as a whole.